Hi everybody. Now, if you've been following my channel, you're probably wondering, wait, didn't we just see a video on how to generate random colors? Well, as it turns out that when I recorded the video and posted it, a lot of you give some pretty helpful suggestions on how to not only make the video better, but also make the code I use for generating random colors just more efficient. And so what I'm gonna do in this video is pretend like the previous video never existed and instead create another video as a companion to the article on the website as well that walks through how to generate random color in and customize it for your various needs. So let's go ahead and try this one more time. So the thing about random colors is that Historically, we've always been hard coding color values for many cases, and that's the right thing to do. You might have a style guide, you might have some guidance from your design team or your UX team that the color that needs to be specified for these values is these particular ones. And so this is typically the right solution, or almost all the time is the right solution. Use the color that you're supposed to be using. But the thing is, sometimes you may wanna have a random color. There'll be times when there's no single color that you need to use where you might be creating an effect where your app cycles for different colors or themes of colors, or you could just be in a situation where you need something quirky, something fun where the best choice of color is one that is randomly chosen for you. And so to make this easier, because it's a common request that I run into on my own, but it's a request I've seen from many of you as well. I've created a simple JavaScript file called randomcolor.js URL below that allows you to generate a random color very easily and that gives you some limited options for customizing it. We'll look at both of those very quickly. And of course, the full article where I go into much greater detail on what exactly this code does and how exactly you can customize it is covered here as well. And there's another video I recorded also on just color values, especially the HSLA color value, which is core to how this random color works that you should look into as well. I'll link to all of that in the video description below. And so if we look at a random color script, randomcolor.js has three functions, well, two actually, and one, one helper. And so notice the title and the description are out of sync. We'll chalk that up to a, a you know, a, a video editing error. I'm gonna leave it in because, hey, makes it more human. So get random color, you call that, you end up getting a color object and then a value gets you the value you need but you also had the ability to call get random color and pass in the H, S, L, and A values that you can use to customize what exactly the output will be, or at least range the output to limit it between certain sets of you know, opening and ending values. And then there's a helper function called get HSLA color that takes our color object and returns it in something that our CSS will use, but you will almost never have to use it directly. It is indirectly used by both get random color in its normal state and in a state where you have to pass in for arguments. And so the way we use it is as follows. The easiest way is to, I have a variable called color. I set it equal to get random color dot value, the function, then the dot value property from that. And then all I need to do is set that value directly to whatever element I am applying the color to. And the output of get random color, it's an object. It's an object with five properties. One property is H for hue, one property is S for saturation, L for lightness, A for alpha. And the last one is value, which is the one we'll almost always use if you don't want to customize it, because that is the property that contains the, the full string that can be set into any property in CSS that accepts color as a valid value. So with that, I'm just gonna jump right into the code and just save you some of the more theoretical hassle because that's not a really interesting thing here. You can read about it if you need it. And so let me go ahead and have a show you a very simple example here. It's a simple page, nothing too fancy going on here. I have VS Code running on one side and I have the browser running on the other. And notice that all I've done here is add a simple HTML boilerplate content, so nothing interesting in that sense, and I add a script element. And this script element points to a random color.js script because that's where all of the logic for being able to set a random color exists. So what I wanna do is just, when I, each time I refresh the page or the page loads, I wanna set a random background color for the body of our page. And so the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna just follow the exact same script that I had in the slides itself. Let color equals get random color and then dot value because that is the output that we care about. And I'm gonna say, that document dot actually yeah document dot body dot style dot background color equals color I'm gonna hit save and once I've done that notice that the that my browser page turns into a uh, have a green background if I refresh the page it can change see that it changes color across a variety of different default values 
Now, there will be times though you want to customize the output of this value. And the arguments that you need to provide for get, gal get random color are the individual properties of HSLA, the hue, saturation, lightness, and alpha. And there's no shortage of ways you can specify that. You just need to make sure it's specified in the form of an array where the first value is the lower bound and the second value is the upper bound. So I'm just gonna do let h equals a bracket of, let's say we wanna stay within the range of yellows, which means that the degree value in hue is around 45 to 55. So I'm gonna keep it there. Let s equals the saturation, the intensity of the color. I want it to be a pretty bold color. So I'm gonna let it to be 80 to 100. And let the lightness equals, you know, I need it to be more on the brighter side. So I'm gonna make it 55 to 90. Actually, I think 95, why not? Because if, if I only have 100, it means it's pure white. You know, we don't want that. But 95 is getting close. And let alpha equals just one and one. You know, I don't want to have any randomization by alpha. I want the color to be fully visible. All right, and so now I'm gonna pass in the argument H, S, L, and A. And once I've done that, notice that each time I refresh the page, we get a random color, but it's clamped within the range of yellow because we set the degree value for H to be 45 to 55. And I can also do something more interesting where we know red is somewhere in the zero degree mark. If I do negative 15 to 15, I can now choose colors that are within the, the red space. And again, check out the video on HSLA colors that I recorded to go into more detail on what each of these properties mean. Now, this is really all there is to being able to use this particular function or this particular get random color function for generating random color, either directly where the default values are specified by, my, by me or by customizing it yourself by providing the H, S, L, and A properties. Now, before I wrap up, I just want to quickly walk through what the random color.js looks like, just so that you have some awareness of what it is. And oftentimes you may not want to reference a different script. So you may always want to copy and paste this into your application instead. No right or wrong way to do it. Whatever you prefer, go for it. And so here has some content comments here that basically say, use it for whatever you want. If you're putting a license that it's applicable to you, go for it. I'm not very picky about this. This code is also not rocket science. It's very boilerplate. And so it's just a convenience. So use it for any purpose, commercial, non-commercial, or you know anything else that might be in that in that world that you need to you know, take into account. And lastly, if you need to reach out to me, just post in the forums and I can answer any questions you might have. But the, looking at the code, the star of this code is the get random color function. And one of the things I've done here is notice the arguments. They're not just HSLA, but I also provided some default arguments by that. So that if you don't provide any arguments, like you're just calling get random color automatically, the values are set for you. And so in this case, if you don't do anything, the default values for hue are 0, 0360, the full color wheel. Every color is valued as something to choose. Saturation is 50 to 100, so it goes from like pretty mud, no, almost you know intense to full intensity. And lightness goes from 50 to 90, so again, you know, somewhat dark, but not quite white, so a range between them. And alpha is set to one and one, no opacity. And that's your default experience. And you can see that the way this works is for each of these arguments, I get a random number that falls between this range. And the get random number function typically works between a low and a high argument, which is convenient because what we specified as our arguments is an array with a high and low value. And so once this code runs for hue, saturation, and lightness, we'll get a random number that falls within the range that we specified. And for alpha, because alpha needs to be between zero and one, that value is divided by 100. And then the return value from all of this is just the, the final resulting number from hue, saturation, lightness, and alpha, where you have H, S, L, A, the properties you publicly see, mapped to the hue, saturation, lightness, and alpha values we calculated just a few moments ago. And value calls get H, S, L, A color, which then takes all these arguments and returns a CSS string. And all get H, S, L, A color does is it returns an H, S, L function with the H, S, L, and alpha value specified. And the thing to note is that saturation lightness need to be specified as a percentage. And this code takes that into account and provides that. And so you have a very simple way of pulling that off. Lastly, this is considered like an Easter egg in some ways. For historical reasons, in case you've been using this code in the past and you don't want to have a breaking change, get simple random color is available where it generates a random RGB value. Why you might need that? You might have some code that doesn't understand HSL. 
In those cases, the RGB value is perfect for what you need. I, I've talked about this maybe in the past, is that RGB is not the best color format for random colors because the way the numbers are represented, the color space it represents, tends to skew more towards darker, muddy, more unsaturated colors. So that if you're randomly picking a value, you might see more colors that are less vibrant than you would otherwise. So get random col get random number, sorry. Get random color is what you need. And for all other cases, you know, if you only need to have an RGB value, use get simple random color. And so with that, you know, let me go back to the slides and we have a very quick overview here on how to use the get random color function to be able to generate random colors. And the goal really is to kind of highlight how easy it is to generate random color without having to do a lot of extra legwork. You, know, you can use the code as is. You can take my code from the script file, copy and paste into your own project, whatever is convenient to you. I just want you to use it to create really cool things. And if you do create something really cool with random colors, do ping me post in the comments below or post in the forums. I'll be happy to check it out. And with that, of course, speaking of the forums, if you have any questions or just want to discuss colors or anything web development related, post in the forums at forum.group.com where I and others would be very happy to help you out. Tell your friends and enemies all about this video if you liked it or if you didn't like it, or if you just lukewarm about it, it's all good. There's no harm in letting people know about this video. Hit subscribe to be notified of new videos that I will be recording periodically on a variety of web development topics. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter, where I share little bite-sized nuggets of web development wisdom. Well, wisdom might be being too generous here, but I do share stuff about web development. Lastly, if you enjoy reading web development topics, I write content both for free on the website on Krupa.com, but I also created books, both in paperback and Kindle editions, that might be just what you're looking for. So with that, I will see you all next time.